Right, what have I got to do? Bush, right, it's another Bryanite. So if you remember, I did the, I think it was the E16, uh, the Bryanite, and I, I quite liked it. Um, it was okay, did a decent job. So I'm having a look at another Bryanite today. So before I start this review, I'd just like to quickly say, Bryanite sent me this one for an honest review. They don't get to see this until it's released. They don't tell me what to put in it. They don't get to edit it. These are my honest thoughts, that's all. Okay, so with that rubbish out of the way, let's see what's in the box. Now, bear in mind, I have carried this for, uh, what's the day? Right, so it'll be over two weeks now. I, that's the general rule on this channel. I like to carry things for at least two weeks. It allows me to really understand what does and doesn't work, how it feels when it comes out of the pocket, whether the buttons really do or don't work, you know, things like that. It's, I find that important. I'm not one of these channels who quickly whips it out the box, runs into the garden and goes, super bright, brilliant, 10 out of 10, right? Click this link. Not interested in doing that. So I'll put this back pretty much how I got it. In fact, we'll just tip the whole lot out. Nobody really wants to see this too much, too long. It's a bit boring anyway. So, boosh, drop kick that. So, there's the manual. I've done this in 4K, so you can pause it if you really want to read the manual. But they do have an online version. I'll probably put the link in the description. There it is. You, you can pause that and have a look. It's in 4K. And there's the back. So, blah, 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 blah. Value added card. Yeah, boosh. I'll go over everything. Don't worry. I'll save you the time. Oh, I say I save you the time. This channel is synonymous with six hour long reviews, so apologies for that. There's your lanyard. So obviously you'd put that around your wrist. And then there is an access point here. It's a little bit fiddly. It's not one of the largest ones, but it's okay. And you would loop it through there. And it means you, can, you, you don't drop things. I mean, people say it stops people stealing it off you and things, you know, if you're in a fight. If I was in a fight, I probably wouldn't be worried about someone stealing the flashlight. You know, I'd be trying to fight for my life, but okay. Um, if you're working at height, though, you know, if electricians will know this. And this, you know, in certain work sites, you have to, by law, if you're working at height, have pretty strict uh, laws on um, using lanyards and things like that, just to stop people getting these dove through their head when you drop them and things like that. So you've got that ability if you want it. It's an okay one. It feels a little tiny bit cheap, although let's just test for power here. So I'll do that until it hurts. Right, it's hurting now. That's not snapping, look, ouch. So just to show you there, there's the indent. Fine, it doesn't have a cinch, I would have liked to have seen a little bit longer with a cinch, but you know, it's a freebie, boosh, get rid of that. A couple of O-rings here, um, and like a, this waxed paper, I haven't seen that before, they're normally in a plastic, nice to see. So a couple of uh, O-rings, basically the O-rings allow you to um, replace the O-ring here on this, on this section. So I'll show you, just quickly. So we'll take this off. And if we zoom in, you see that bit there, that is your O-ring. So that just ensures a bit of waterproofing. So we'll zoom back out there. And the threads on this are like the angular type. Um, they're pretty nice. I had no problems with them whatsoever. And when I say angular, what I'm referring to is the fact that they're not those really thin, annoying ones where they can sort of, you can strip the thread and things like that. And um, it's got a bit of grease on there, which is nice. Look at that, beautiful, listen. Hardly any sound. I know I'm making something out of nothing there, but I like that quality. So quality machine in there. Um, there's your spring. Pretty decent. Pretty standard. And yes, I'm not touching it with my finger. Calm down. It's my, it's the nail I'm using here. A nice beefy spring. In regards to the spring and the cell, obviously the cell that they send you, it's got one of their wraps on. Happens to be a button top. But I did test it with, and I'll show you. I did test it with. I think it was this one, wasn't it? Yeah, with a 30Q. So a Samsung 30Q, so an 18650, exactly the same size, but this is a flat top. I tested that, in fact, I'll show you now, just to prove it. So it does work with flat tops, if you think, because some don't when they, when they come with a, a button top like that, but watch, there, so put that on, does work, and listen, even if you're rattling it, it doesn't turn off. So it does work, I've had no problems. Uh, for a couple of days, I used the 30Q, never had an issue. So it does work with your own cells, don't worry about that. Uh, the cell that they give you, not a lot on it here, 18650, it's got the usual uh, nominal voltage there, so high drain, well, I don't, but it's not that high, and in regards to capacity, it is here, 3000 milliamp hour, so in line with the Samsung 30Q there, so brilliant, nice. I prefer that, I don't like it when these companies stick in like a 2600 and things like that, I think, come on, you're being a little bit cheap there, you might be saving a few pennies, but you're not getting as long a run time, so pop that back in. So... 
The name of this is because uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I've gone off on a tangent here. So the name of this is the Brynite E18, and they have given it the code name of Femi, whatever that means. Uh, when I first picked it up, I thought they meant uh, Phenom, um, as in phenomenal. Um, uh, I used to see that on the AMD processor, sort of Femi, whatever that means. Um, they do that with a lot of them, the Noctagons and, not Noctagons, um, the, the E16 and the other ones and the Brian, the Oathkeeper. They give it a name, so like Oathkeeper and stuff, although they may not want to use Oathkeeper now after those people were arrested for um, doing some storming of the capital or whatever the hell it was. Okay, so this is the E18. It's using an SST40. You wouldn't know that because by looking through here, you can't find out what the emitter is. There's some run times and things like that, but trying to work out what the emitter is, you can't. The only way I was able to find out was by unscrewing the head, and it is unscrewable, so the modders will be interested in that. So you take this off with your TIR in it. There's the TIR. I'll show you from the inside there. So it is one solid piece. Nice to see. And there it is. So SST40 at the top, the nomination, and there is the, if I can get it to focus, my apologies, come on, focus your swine, there you go. Okay, so it is an SST40 there. Um, Tint-wise, again, I couldn't find that. It feels like about a 600 to me. It could be heading up towards 6,400 Kelvin. Um, it's white-ish, but it's not that white. Um, you know, that, that, looks, that looks quite neutral there, actually. And then as you go up, but as the power increases, it becomes whiter. It's, I would call it a whitish tint. Let's just call it that, because I couldn't find any rating on that. I did do some of my own testing, and the tint I got was in regards to Kelvin value. I got 5,384, but we'll go over that in a moment. I want to tell you about the light first. So it comes with a 1.5 meter drop rating. So if you drop that on concrete or whatever from 1.5 meters, they are saying that it should be fine. I didn't have any problems. I dropped it a few times, but miraculously, there's not a lot of damage. There's I mean, you see on the rim of this blue section, there's a tiny little bit of chip in there, you see it? I dropped it in gravel. It's a very small amount, the one I have carried this for two weeks. And the other way on this was there. Can you see just above my fingernail? A tiny little bit on that prominent point, and a tiny bit there. But other than that, I did good. Um, in regards to the anodization, it's quite thick. It doesn't have knurling. They, they call this, I thought it was hexagons, but they say it's poly, polygons. Um, it's just another take on Nerl, and it gives them their own unique look. The Brynites seem to, to use this on a lot of the EDC lights, and it's fine. It's fine, does its job. I think Nerlin may have slightly more grip, but then that depends on how aggressive the Nerlin is, in other words, how deep they've cut that. So it's enough. It's enough for an AC, EDC light, you know. And it comes with a clip, which is reversible. You can take that off and stick it the other way. Although it's semi-reversible in that you have your usable, sort of usual uh, setting there. With you Now, it does have like a detent there, which is a bend in the material. See, that's cut out and pushed down just to try and keep it on your jeans pocket or whatever. It's not full deep carry. You've got this extra section here, which, which implies deep carry, but it isn't. I would have liked to have seen that go right at the top. Not that it matters too much because it's... Sometimes I use the two finger method, so if you imagine that's the top of the pocket or there, sometimes I just pull out with two fingers like that. I, f I just find that easier and then I flip it like that and press the button. Um, not everyone does that, I understand though. But I would have liked to see that a little bit longer and maybe it's protruding a little bit longer down, but not, it's not the end of the world. It, it works and it's nice, it's pliable enough, but it sticks enough um, and it stays in your pocket. So nice to see, um, quite nice design. Some people will complain and say, look at those accents, they're copying off all light. I don't agree, it's just a blue. I mean, you, I've seen that on other lights from Skill and things like that, it's not the end of the world. Does the job, looks decent, it's not over the top. Um, looks quite smart actually, I quite like it. Button's okay, I, as you know, when I keep going on about it, I prefer recessed buttons, but this does have E-lock, which we'll cover in the UI section. So you don't really need to worry about it going off by accident. <clears throat> or you can just use the classic technique of Twist the, twist the tail, and then it doesn't work. Twist it, and then now it does work. There, just to prove it is on. There. Okay, so it's an IPX6, well, it's an IP68, so it's dust proof, and in regards to the waterproofing, it is an 8 rating. In other words, this is waterproof, not water resistant, so you can submerge it in water. I, I like that, that gives me confidence on the light. I mean, in regards to that, I think these come with a five year guarantee, uh, maintenance, warranties. Um, I'll have to check the website, but I'm pretty sure if it absolutely collapses, it's five years. Uh, but I haven't got the retail box. This is a testing unit they've sent me. And just to prove that, 
There you go. Sample, not for sale. So they haven't sent me the retail box. So you'll get this in a different box when you buy it. Here's the charging cable because it is a USB rechargeable, this light. So I'll use their cable uh, just to prove that it works. I did use my cable and another couple of cables, but there's something I want to cover in regards to charging. So we'll, we'll just use a charger here. This one will give me a figure. So it's a Type A to Type C. I like Type C because no matter which way around you put it, it goes in, not like the, the awful micro USB where you have to put it in a specific way around. Now here's the the Type C slot. It's a quite a different design. This flap, um, it's very flat on a lot of them. They're, they're prominent, and you can pick them. You've got it, with this one. You've got to dig your fingernail in, and then pull it out. And then as you look in, I found this a little bit fiddly for getting back in. Watch, you've got to like push it in that way, then then lift that bit and push that in. I think that's a little bit fiddly. But it, it works, it works, and it, it seems waterproof. You know, I've ran under the tap a lot of times and never had any problems. So if you do want to charge it, just plug it in. There you go, turn the light off, might help. There, okay, so what's happening here? So around five volts it's charging at, and 0 0.7 of an amp there, so pretty decent. It's not a mega rapid charger, but it's only an 18650, you know, you don't really need it to be that rapid. It's not a huge 26650 cell or a 21700. When it's charging, the button light is illuminated red, then it eventually goes green to say, right, it's finished charging, done. The problem I did have with this, because that's all great, that's fantastic, I had no problems, and it even works whilst it's charging, watch. Uh, it only lets you use three modes, you can only use moon, low and medium, but at least you can use those different modes. So once it's on and charging, see, so moon, low, medium, moon, low, medium, you can't use any other modes, which was a shame. Now, if I get my type C cable, if you give me a few seconds, I think it's over there. There it is. Okay, so this is a type C to type C. In other words, you're gonna need power delivery. So if this, if power delivery isn't implemented on this, it won't work. Now here's the problem. So that's plugged in, and yes, I know this cable works. I've tried it many times, and I use it for many purposes. Nothing. It does not charge. So look, no red light, nothing. Now that's a shame. So there's no power delivery on this. Even though it's Type C, for whatever reason, they haven't implemented power delivery. If that is updated at some point, I'll be happy to put that in the comments. But at this moment in time, it isn't got it. So I'm going to mark them down for that. It's 2022. Come on. Type C to Type C is becoming a lot more common and you wouldn't be able to charge a light. I'm not happy with that. Okay, so their cable works, we know that. And I've tried my own cables. Okay, so moving on. So yes, it's power delivery. You can use it whilst it's charging this Type C. However, no power delivery. Okay, so let's go over the UI. The UI is pretty simple. Uh, one click turns it on and one click turns it off. When it is on, you just click and hold. So I click and hold and it goes through the modes. And I'll go through those in a minute. But as you can see, it just ramps up them and cycles back again. There. If you want to quickly go to a specific mode, double click takes you to turbo, or double click again takes you to moon. In other words, the very much the, the absolute lowest. And then click again, straight back to turbo. So you can quickly switch between those modes. Um, now you do have strobe, which is three clicks. So bear in mind two is obviously takes you straight to turbo. Uh, three will give you strobe, and I'll cover that because I don't want to annoy people who are affected by strobe. So one, two, three, but you can see it is flashing there. There's, you, it's not like uh, Andrew, you can't change the frequency of that, you can't change it up or down. It's like a tactical strobe, so maximum on, maximum off, and repeat. Um, and then within that mode, you can go to one sub mode. So there, SOS, so it flashes out SOS in Morse code, and then back again back to flash and then just one click back to normal. There's no four click, I don't understand why. Um, so one, two, three, four, does nothing. It would have been nice to see lockout in that mode because to lockout you've got to do five. I don't know why you've got to go that extra step when they're not using four clicks, but okay, that's a decision they've made. So one, two, three, four, five. In fact, I didn't do that fast enough. One, two, three, four, five. So it flashes, right, flashes twice, e lockout, it won't work now. Listen, I am pressing that. See, nothing. So one, two, three, four, five, it'll flash again, right, boom, right, back in normal mode. So that's your E-lock, in other words, it will not work. It won't go off by accident in your pocket. But in order to do that, you could also use a physical lockout like this, watch. See it is on, watch, there. You can physically lock it out. You are dismantling the circuit, basically, or um, interrupting it. 
there you go circuit back on and it will function again so pretty simple the only problem I do have with the UI is you can't get the turbo you, you can get the turbo sometimes but you can't other times so if you go from locked off so low medium high turbo low moon low medium high turbo see now it didn't do it that time so so moon low medium high turbo moon low medium high turbo then, then it misses turbo out so if you click and hold from off it goes moon low medium high turbo then it cycles back then it ignores turbo and goes moon low medium high moon low medium high and when it's on it does the same thing so we'll, we'll try that now it's on so moon low medium high moon now why is it missing out turbo so i find that a bit strange that i understand what it's doing it's you're only getting turbo the first time but to a new user who probably doesn't want really complicated flashlights and can't be bothered to read things like this i think that's a little bit of a problem if you give this to a non-flashaholic they're going to get it and go well, i can't is that highest i don't know i mean i'm finicky and i play with these things do you really want someone having to do that probably not uh, and and yes you can get to the turbo by double clicking so double click turbo double click moon double click turbo just seems a bit strange i don't know why it's cycling why did why not just have it so it always cycles to just moon low medium high then if you want turbo you got to double click that, that's how i would have done it because bear in mind the the turbo does have a step down uh, and it's a, it's a two minute timed one this rather than a heat one i don't know why they've done that maybe it's to keep it nice and slim a lot less work for them they haven't put power delivery and they haven't put um temperature step down it is a constant current driver this um there was no pulse width modulation but it just feels like they've rushed some of the things um so i, I will have to mark them down slightly for that so in the, in regards to ui i understand it and it does work but i think it's overly confusing and why does four clicks not lock it out when four clicks does nothing but then you've got to go straight to five do you see where I'm coming from here? Maybe I'm being picky, but I have to be. That's what this channel is about. I have to look for problems. And this is what I've noticed over the, the weeks that I've carried this, where I've thought, right, is that turbo? I don't know, right, double click. I'll just use double click and ignore the normal UI. That's a bit irritating. Um, okay, so it does have battery level as well. When it's running, if you notice this light here, if I cover that, you see that's green. It looks a little bit yellow there, but it is green, trust me. Um, so. When that's running, you get, I know it's running all the time. I don't know what the purpose of that is because a lot of lights, it'll just do the battery check initially, then turn off to save energy. Although I can't imagine that using a, a, you know, a huge draw and it's not all the time. But when you turn that on, uh, if, it'll be green if your battery is between 100 and 30%. So as, as it goes down towards the 30%, if it goes past the 30%, so your battery is between 30 and 10% in capacity left, it will go red and eventually it will flash red when you're less than 10%. You must start charging that. You're going to start damaging the cell in regards to its longevity and ability to maintain recharging cycles and things like that. Um, so in fact, I'll, I'll just pop this down. So I did do some testing on the CRI and tint. So here's my quick results here. I'm not going to belabor the point here. What I do want to point out is the CRI, in other words, the color rendering index, in other words, how lifelike that is, was a little bit low. It was 62.9 in my test, and I think that's a little bit low. Um, it's a shame that because um, 70 is okay, you know, 95 is beautiful looking. Uh, I realize the mass market may not care what I'm saying here. Uh, most people you hand this to aren't going to go, oh my God, the CRI is 10% less than I thought it would be. Yes, I totally understand that. But when you're paying for a light, you want it to perform in all areas don't you so i'm pointing this out so i found that i thought that was a little bit low and color rendering is just how much of the color gamut you get back into your eyes bearing in mind um natural light as in from the sun during the day it should be 100 percent so you're down to the, about 62.9 on this light the tint again i mentioned at the start of this was 5384 i think um okay not so bad not bad yeah pretty good actually um, I thought this was a cool white it isn't um, it looks it looks whiter than that when when you're out and about but in turbo maybe there's a slight change there I don't know but that's what the figures say so that's that must be what it is okay so get get shot of that there boom right that's out of the way so I'll quickly go over the modes here just quickly just so I can give you some run times and lumen outputs because there's a little bit of confusion there as well so if we go to its lowest which is moon there now that's only five lumens 
why I don't know why they've called that moon mode because I think that's quite bright. Bear in mind if you're on pitch dark and you're trying to read, you know, like a map or something, you've got it on some something white, that reflects back quite a bit. I think that's too much. I would have preferred to have seen moon as one lumen. That's probably all you need to not give away your position or not ruin night vision or just use a tiny amount or leave it running. I, I feel that's a bit high. But anyway, it's five lumens, that's what they've decided. And you get 220 hours out of that. The next one is low, which is 35 lumens, so not bad. I, I could sort of walk by that, no problems with hiking. Um, you get 40 hours out of that, really good. Um, and then I think there was medium, which is 100 and, was it 151 or 100, no, it was 115 lumens on that one. So you get 10 and a half hours out of that, that's pretty good. I'm calling it medium, they call it mid, but I, they, they mean medium, I guess. Then the next one is high. So 450 lumens, uh, no step down in that, but you get about two and a half hours, 2.8 hours. Brilliant, um, I did most of my testing on that, walking around and hiking and things like that. Although I will say for hiking, it looks like it's quite wide, but this punchy bit is where most of the lumens are going. Uh, in fact, I'll show you some pictures later on. It's probably not the best for hiking because this peripheral is quite weak, but I will show you that in some shots and comparisons. Um, you know, it, it's okay, but it's more of a punchy beam. And then you do have your turbo, so turn it off. If I can get it turned off. Right, there's your turbo. So there's your 1200 lumens, so very bright there. Uh, but bear in mind, there is a two minute step down. So it's 1200 lumens, but quite a large step down. It steps all the way down to 550 lumens. That's quite a large step. I'm not sure why it's so huge, but okay. Uh, heat wise, not particularly bad. Look, I've got that on full. It's not burning me or anything, but it's not mega high, you know, it's 1,200 lumens. But it is hot, um, and so because of that and the size of this and the slimness of this, there is a step down. But again, look, heat, no real problems. You know, it's not burning my hand or anything. I think it did pretty well like that. So there you go. So that's your UI, which I think is a little bit fiddly. I think this is a little bit fiddly. This could be a bit longer. So there's, so there's a few things I want to go over. But before I do that, um, there were some lights that I tested it against. So we'll put this down here. So I tested it against all of these lights. So quite a few of them. In fact, what we'll do is, I'll talk about these in a moment, but let's bring up a picture. Okay, so here, let's bring up a picture. Brilliant, there you go. Right, well, right we've got a picture up, okay. So the, the Brynite E18, which is what we're reviewing here, is top left. Then next to it, you've got the old Convoy S2 Plus, not the normal one, the Plus one. Then the older Olight S2, then the Skillhunt M200. And I realise there's an M300 out now, but you know, they brought that up just after I bought the 200, which was a bit annoying. And then the Stofern, very popular, Stofern SC31 Pro, quite, quite a nice light. Then bottom left, you've got the older through night TC15, more of a thrower. Wubin C3, which they've now fixed that square beam. Um, quite nice and bright, oh, using a Nosrum. Then you've got the Wubin D1, which is a super wide beam with a bit of punch in the middle. And then the very popular Workos FC11, a budget light, but with high CRI and a nice warm tint. Okay, so what can we see? Now straight off, I'm gonna point out the obvious. So top left, Brynite E18. Look at the peripheral, left and right, poor. So does that mean, right, don't get this light, it's the end of the world, no. What you need to understand is, look at the distance. It is very illuminating at, di at the distance, which is an SST40, you know, that, that's the good for throw. It's very bright in the middle. However, if I was hiking, I would want something with a bit more peripheral vision. I just find it better for hiking, it stops you falling over and things like that. So if you need peripheral vision, in other words, left and right, a bit more illuminated, this isn't the light for you, okay? You need to understand that that's not what this is designed for, even though it's a TIR. Now, generally with a TIR, you get a nice, wide, floody beam. This isn't the case with this. It, this seems to be more of a thrower. If you compare it to the S2 next to it, um, you, uh, immediately you go, well, the S2 is better, isn't it? Well, it's better peripheral vision, yes. It's not full, but it's better. But if you look at the distance, um, it's not as bright as it in the central hotspot because more of the lumens on the Brynite are going out, being thrown out at a distance, whereas the S2 is spreading out more. However, there is a dis difference in how they're doing this. The Brynite is using a TIR, one physical piece of plastic to spread that beam. And then the Convoy S2 is using a, is using a more traditional uh, reflector, which is an aluminum reflector, and it is is using an orange peel reflector to to smooth out to smooth it out a little bit. And I think it does a decent job for the for an older light. So next we have the Olight S2. So S2 baton. 
it's it's similar in a lot of ways to the brownite although you, i would say the central section of brightness is wider and peripherals tiny little bit better so maybe that's just a better design on the tir if you want more peripheral again i'm not saying that this light is bust because oh no no good it's better at throw than the other lights isn't it um next along is a skill hunt that doesn't look as bright but peripheral vision brilliant i mean you look at the far left and the far right and compare it to the e18 it's even better than the s2 so i think that's doing a really good job even though i find with a lot of the skill hunts i'd never quite feel like i'm getting the full lumen output that they're claiming on the box but nice warm tint on that one top right sofa and sc31 pro i think that does a brilliant job it's got an excellent bit of hot spot in the middle there it's not that wide but it's punchy and then peripheral brilliant look at it i really like that one uh, bottom left through night tc15 quite good peripheral not full though because it is a thrower so on the far right of the through night tc15 it's cutting off some of that tree but again it does on the other ones um, but it's more of a thrower so if you look at the furthest away point which is across the across the bridge at the other side of that river it's similar to the brynite in that you're getting more through although you could argue the through night's better because peripherals better okay fair enough next is the wooban c3 which i slagged off for having a bit of a square beam and um, they've fixed that now as, as well as a charging issue which is good so uh, you know I'm, I'm more happy to say that that is a good light now um does an okay job um similar in a lot of ways to the all s2 isn't it i would say but the s2 maybe is a slight wider beam but uh, I think the throw on the Wubin's probably better. It's more of a tiny bit of a whiter tint, maybe, although the Olights are quite white tinted as well. But next is the Wubin D1. If you remember, the Wubin D1 is very wide. Um, I'll show you that at the end of the video. It's very, very wide, and then it has a, a thin punch in the middle for a bit of throw using a TIR setup. I think it does a good job. Peripheral, great, left and right, perfectly acceptable. And the throw is on par with like, the S2-ish. Um, although it looks a bit whiter, um, I think that is a whiter tint on that. I think that's that's probably a good all rounder. But like I say, the throw isn't maybe as strong as the Brynite. If you compare the Wubin D1 to the Brynite E18, there, I would say the throw is better on the Brynite in regards to brightness and width. Um, you can see that there. And then the Workos FC11, I think, is you know cri it looks very that, that looks true to life as you know when i stood there and looked at that tint's nice cri is nice i'm getting a lot of browns coming out there and it seems to excel on uh peripheral and it's got a little bit of uh, the throw seems to suffer there um so you know if you want high color rendering and a good peripheral then you'd probably go for the work -offs. so to sum up i would say the brainette is doing a great job at throw it's quite powerful in that regards um, but peripheral is not its strong point is it um, i'm not going to zoom in and out and compare stuff because you can see that it's plain to see um, it's not one of these ones where we really need to zoom in and make tiny little granular looks at different things you can see that straight off okay so we'll get rid of that picture there right that gets rid of that okay so in regards to those lights and then i'll give you some good points and bad points for this light like i say here was the skill hunt which is using a smooth reflector quite shallow uh, quite a warm tint on that probably not as much output but against the, they're all using the same battery um, but there's just one of your options and it does have magnetic charging whereas this doesn't uh, but obviously do, do you can you find the magnetic charger there's the problem whereas most people can find a type c c3 um, they've now fixed the squareness of this decent nice and bright nice throw um, a fun cheap budget light good job um, and then I compared it to the Workos FC11, great CRI, good peripheral, um, not as much throw maybe as this, and it's using an orange peel reflector, so just to show you there. And this one does have a charging port, and it's Type C, which is great. Uh, okay, so I also tested it against the Olight, quite small looking comparison, but there's no onboard charging on this, so you do not get onboard charging and a slightly different TRR design. See that? Different TIR. Although the colour scheme look very similar. And then I also tested against the Sofa and SC31 Pro. Great light, smooth reflector. I think this does a great job. Um, very cheap. Um, the clip's not the best, but it, it works. Um, and it's decent. And you've got like an Android uh, UI. So pretty decent. Okay, so 
turn that off boom the old s2 plus i tested against this is my war horse here i've dropped this a million times still works with an orange peel reflector an older at something like an, an xhp high or something like that very old but it's a tail clicker still works very simple and robust and some of the other lights wuben d1 again watch look at the width on this just as a just to show you we'll compare it so we'll turn that on and you can see you can see the width of that one so there's your spill See it coming out the sides and there's your spot which is firing off in the distance. So if we compare that to this, look at the width of that. So I would say that that's better look. You see it's not 180 degrees but it's it's getting close and that also has the mag base there. But you see it's it's right up here. But it's hard to see. I need a bit of, I'll put some, something white on. There you go. Now you can see it. See it? See the line? So very, very, very wide. Um, so, but the throw is going to suffer. The dis the width of the throw is not going to be quite as good as this, which has a, which is really I, I would consider this a TIR thrower, a slim TIR thrower. Um, you know, this is great. Uh, I like this for hiking. This is probably better for something else or just an EDC light. So I compared it with all those, um, and I compared it with the old um, TC15 from Through Night. This is more of a thrower though, and as you can see, that is as. You know, it's got a smooth reflector which is designed for a bit of throw, and that's what it does. It doesn't have very good uh, peripheral, although it's not too bad. If you remember the picture we looked at compared to these two, it wasn't too bad. It's got a slightly bigger head there, very, very slightly. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Right, good points and bad points, and I'm going to give this a mark out of 10. I'm trying to keep this as rapid as possible. Okay, so pros is type C, so it is a type C charger, which is great. Um, it works well since charging. You only get three of the modes, but that's fine, because when you're charging, you're not going to want it on turbo anyway. Um, it's IPX8, in other words, waterproof. Brilliant, I like that. Uh, Five-year warranty, great. Mag base, bit of utility there. You know, it will stick to stuff there, see? Which is great. Uh, it will work with flat top 18650s as well. I had no problems with that. It's got memory function, so it remembers what mode you were last in. And quite a punchy beam. Um, quite a good thrower. However, cons. No power delivery, so you can't use Type-C at Type-C. That's a nuisance, especially in 2022. Clip could be longer. Make it, make it full deep carry and maybe extend this slightly. But okay, not the end of the world. Maybe that's just me being picky. The UI is strange for the reasons which I've covered again. I'm not going to cover them again. Sometimes you get turbo, sometimes you don't. Then you go, you know. And why is four clicks does nothing and then five is lock? Could you not just move five down to four? Maybe there's just a thought. Five lumens in moon mode seems a bit high, but that's just me. Um, uh, low CRI was about 62, 63%. I would have liked to have seen that a bit higher. I'm not sure what bin they're using for these LEDs. Slightly squarish beam, and I'll show you that. It's certainly not the level of the C3, but I need something. I'll try it on this. I can't really see it actually, but it is slightly squarish. See this section here, there, uh, this bit here. See how it's like rounded off, rectangular. Not sure what's going on there because the TIR isn't like that. So the t there's a, this bit isn't obviously this is fine, but then you've got this little bit of angularity here. I'm not sure what's why that is, especially on a TIR which is round. Not really sure what's going on there, but okay, that's the way it is. So there's a, a tiny little bit of uh, squarishness in the beam, uh, but it's it's very hard to detect and I'm being picky, I understand that. And it has a large step down, it goes from its, um, you know, 1200 lumens all the way to 550. I'm not sure why it jumps so much, but could it not just have jumped to 750 or something like that and continue in that vein, but okay. So I'm gonna give this a mark out of 10. So bear in mind, there's, there's a few cons there, isn't there? Um, I'm gonna give this, it just gets a 7.5. And the reason it gets that is because you hand this to most people, they're gonna love it. It's nice and slim, it looks good, feels nice, it does the job. However, I have to point those things out. So no power delivery. In fact, now I might just give it a seven. No, I'm gonna be yeah, seven. Gotta be honest, give it a seven. There's things I want changed on this, but if you hand this to most mainstream people, they're gonna enjoy it and they're not gonna have any problems with it. But the flashlight flashaholics, they may go, well, hang on, no power delivery. Uh, your UI is a little bit finicky, the moon load could be lower, the CRI is a little bit, there's a bit of squareness in the beam, that large step down, things like that. Um, for me, it's power delivery. Uh, as we move forward, power delivery becomes more and more important. 
you know, I, I've changed over a load of power sockets in the house, which are Type C now. So I, I want to use a Type C to Type C. I wouldn't be able to charge this. Or if I was in the car using that Type C socket, I wouldn't be able to charge it. And that's a problem. Okay, so seven out of ten. Okay, it's you know it's above average because you know five out of ten would be average, obviously out of ten. So seven's fine. It's great. It's okay. I enjoy using it. I'll be honest. I enjoy using it. I like that little bit punch on the beam, and I like it. Uh, but there's things I would change. So 7.5 out of 10. Keep up the good work, Brian. I, there's just things you need to change on that, in my personal opinion. You know, bear in mind, I'm not an expert. I'm a flashlight uh, fanatic. These are just my opinions. Okay, so uh, enough of me waffling. I'll, I've done loads of comparison shots, um, looking at them together. So we can have a look at them together. And you can make up your own mind. So I'm off. Bye-bye.